like the new R12 CLX Pro, but prefer a bolt action? Well, today's review is going to be right up your street. Watch on. And welcome to AAR On Air. Today is the review of the new R12 CLX uh, non-pro. Now, this is pretty much identical to the amazing and I want one R12 CLX Pro, but with the bolt action and no thumb hole stock. It is, however, still available in the wonderful walnut and black and the black pepper laminate finishes, along with a soft touch black version, all from Manelli. So let's take a walk around, shall we? This is the super carbine version as opposed to the carbine version, and it's around 950 millimeters long from tip to tail, which is just under 37 and a half inches. It tips the scales at 3.4 kilograms or 7.5 pounds unscoped. Now the carbine version is a little longer and a little heavier at 1030 millimeters or 40.5 inches and around 3.6 kilograms or 7.9 pounds, depending on your choice of stock. Without a doubt, it does have the classic R10 feel about it, but with a whole host of upgraded features to bring it bang up to date. It uses the CLX monoblock platform with the new 12 round magazines in either 177 or 22 calibers with more caliber options to follow. Now, some of the changes are not immediately evident, such as the pre-supplied and factory fitted sling studs which have been moved to enable the fitting of a bipod without interfering with the access to the filler port, which is just in front of the oversized air gauge. This, like the CLX R12 Pro, is fitted with a magnetic surround, which also acts as a dust cover for the filler port. Now, this is nicely recessed to prevent catching it in use, and the magnets in there should be strong enough to prevent it from being knocked off and lost in use. There is also the cocked indicator on the right-hand side of the gun as an additional safety feature. The barrel is fitted with a shroud and silencer and keeps the noise down to a very acceptable level. Below this is the 200cc air bottle, which, with the all-new regulator on board, will increase the shot count, giving around 140 shots in 177, or 215 in 22 calibre, pellet and length dependent. They have made subtle changes to the forestock, which means you're now able to fit the 280cc bottle and the much bigger 400cc bottle if you prefer. Now, I know a lot of you have been crying out for a carbon bottle option to the CLX range. And I can only say that particular conversation has been had with the top brass at BSA. And, well, be patient and watch this space. The rail on top is the usual 13 millimeter dovetail that has become so familiar with the BSA range and leaves plenty of space for you to fit your favorite scope without getting in the way of anything. The bolt is typical Oh, BSA, and is silky smooth, and has always been a favourite of mine. The pellet probe now is high-grade stainless steel. The trigger is, as you would expect, superb, with what seems like more adjustment on it than a driver's seat on a Bentley. Then, of course, there is that Minelli stock. The only word I can think of is gorgeous. They really do make the most wonderful, high-quality stocks. 
The cheek piece on this one is ambidextrous. It's gorgeous, it really is. I'm a bit of a Black Pepper fan. And it would suit most shooters. And with the bolt on the right-hand side means that left-handed shooters can keep their finger on the trigger and still activate the bolt. The butt also houses the second factory fitted swivel stud. Again, a feature not found on many guns these days. The safety is to the rear and is easily operated with your thumb and is straight to hand if you shoot thumbs up. Whilst there is no hard case included in the price, there is, of course, that shroud and silencer and two magazines, which, when you consider the price of this, which is around £1,080 UK for the walnut and 1150 UK for this gorgeous black pepper laminate, I personally think these are superb value, especially when you compare it to some of the higher end, much advertised and reviewed rifles that are double the price. And in my experience, nowhere near the accuracy of this cold hammer forge barrel that is fitted to each and every one of these R12s. So, is £1,100 a lot of money? Well, that depends if you've got it or not. I think it fits nicely into the R12 range, giving you the option of a bolt action or a side lever, a traditional stock or a thumb hole stock. The future option to fit larger air bottles and who knows, maybe a carbon version at some point in the future. I would be sure someone is going to want to have either a standard stock on a side lever or a thumb hole on a bolt. Who knows? But that can often be the beauty of having a monoblock system on a rifle. This is the sub 12 foot pound version in 177. So it's probably time to get it over the chronograph to check its power levels. Using standard 8.44 grains, it saw 774 feet per second, which is 11.23 foot pounds or 15.23 joules. This came with an FPS spread of just seven feet per second. Out then with the heavier 10.34 grains, it saw 712 feet per second, which is 11.64 foot pounds or 15.78 joules. This time it had a spread of only six feet per second. Nothing wrong with those figures, is there? Of course, you do get a whole host of stuff, a real bag full in the box, including, as always, one of the BSA locks. Always a nice touch the adapter to take the shroud off and just shoot with the silencer. The filler probe, which, as I say, fits nice and neatly in front of the gauge. And of course, two magazines of the caliber of your gun. Loading these up is easy peasy. It really is. Simply drop in your first pellet make sure it seats nicely. Now, one of the things with these is they have a, a rubber O-ring going through it. So, if you're putting such as these gold stars in, which are really quite short pellets, you need to make sure they're in correctly seated so that you don't catch them as you're rotating the magazine to drop in there you go, it needs to be just, that's it, perfectly into the magazine. So take a little time and it will fit in perfectly. It then slots nicely into the gun and you're ready to go. You do, of course, have a countdown indicator on each one of these to show you how many shots you have left. You do have on these beautiful stocks a graded finish to the stippling on the forestock, underside and the grip area, which makes it grippier at the top, slightly less at the bottom, but it gives a beautiful defined pattern. 
Manelli makes such a good job of these stocks. They're gorgeous. The rear butt pad is also fully adjustable to get that perfect positioning. Well, I think it's time to get this out on the range. I've been shooting this for a couple of days and it feels like putting on an old, comfortable pair of slippers. It does have a preference in pellets, however, that I've found anyway. But get that right and then it hits its sweet spot. Now I've been using the BSA 3 to 9 scope, which is okay, but it isn't what the R12 deserves in my opinion. But it's on here, so let's shoot it with it. Out at 40 meters. Here goes. BSA R12 CLX. <laughs> it looks so similar to the R10, favorite of mine but so many differences as we probably already discussed all it is really now down 40 meters standard three to nine bsa scope it's all right nothing to write home about no side focus or anything like that so potential parallax issues but we're at a fixed point try and keep it nice and neat and together it's grouping that we're looking for at the end of the day 12 rounds, I've tried several different pellets. The ones that it does seem to prefer are, believe it or not, the BSA pellets, which are H&N. And, well, let's just give it a go, shall we? I love the CLX Pro, absolutely love it. This is straight out of the box. It still looks a long way away at nine times magnification. I do like the triggers on these. It's a little shorter and lighter than my R10, but still very, very nice. And in this instance, I have chosen to deliberately not take the centre out of the bull because the, the magnification isn't that great. I need something to aim at. And if I just blow the centre of the bull out, then I've lost my aim point. So I know full well it's going to be off target, but it's the grouping. Now, from what I can see, that doesn't look bad at all. Let's go and have a closer look. That way you can see that. Size of my thumb, head, probably less than that. Size of my fingernail, really. And that is all 12 shots, pretty much everything touching. It's impossible to, to say where they all are. Most of them just went straight through the same hole. I'm not surprised. I would have been very disappointed if it hadn't have produced results like that. And you can pick up guns way more expensive than that with all fancy electronic trickery. And that some of those will struggle to do that. And I have tried a few recently and there is no way they would come as close as that. And they were pretty much exactly double the price of this. Back to the studio. The accuracy is just super and always consistent. I must add that I shot this particular 177 with several different types of pellets and it didn't take too kindly to the QYS pellets, which was a bit of a shock. So I then used JSBs, which proved to be a bit better, but the favourite 
of the ones I tried were the BSA Gold Stars. And I would strongly suggest if you buy one of these, play around a bit with a few more pellets. Because once you find exactly what your gun prefers, you're going to have a match made in heaven. Do I like it? Silly question, really. Value for money? Undoubtedly. Accurate? <laughs> Unquestionably. High quality? Absolutely. Should it be on the Christmas list? Quite possibly. That's it. Please give us the old thumbs up, subscribe, take a look at the news channel with the link up here. Feel free to share, click the alarm bell, join in with this little lot, check out the website and merch, and a big thank you to BSA and of course the guys down at Vector Air for all their help. Mostly, as always, my biggest thanks goes out to you guys for watching and supporting the channel. Stay safe and shoot safe. <laughs> and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.